All right, we're recording. We're recording a podcast. Turn off your, silence your phones. What's the matter? You motherfuckers can't take a motherfucker seriously unless he's got a big screen with a roller coaster and popcorn busted in the air. Silence your fucking phones, damn it. All right. You're listening to Sylph Radio, the Pokemon. I don't even remember how we introduced this shit anymore now. <laughs> this is Sylph Radio, a Pokemon podcast. I'm Nathan K. Today, I'm joined by... Jeremy Davis. And... And Phil C. again. You know why I call myself Nathan K., right, Phil? No, I don't. Because you told me Nathan Kapiser is too long and I need an easier, shorter, more memorable name. That works. That definitely does work. Really? We... I just don't like my last name. So there you have it, folks. Straight from the source. That That's straight from my source. Your mom will be so... Just embarrassed and ashamed. You know your mom is a regular listener to this podcast. I should hope not. <laughs> yeah, no. Two things that I know Phil's mom loves are Pokemon and the Swearing. horrible things we say on the show. I can just see the disappointment. Can we look. not talk about my mom on this show? This is not the Phil's Mom Show podcast, okay? Keep this motherfucker moving. <laughs> Radio, a Phil's mom podcast. I'm out. Hey guys, it's like Halloween and shit. Indeed. Happy, happy Halloween time. Happy autumn time. Why happy do people sullen. not give us full size candy bars? What is with these mini size things? I'm getting sick of that. I mean, I haven't trick or treated in like 10 years. I was but still. I was going to ask, are you still trick or treating? I feel bad for the kids nowadays. I kind of want to go trick or treating. I feel like what's the worst that could happen? Like they say no, right? They're not going to call the cops on me for. Actually, they might. They might. Which is why I haven't gone. And I mean, but what, what am I doing wrong? I tried to trick or treat. I'm 30 now. I go up there. They give you this awkward look. They say this is for the kids. And then they say no. And I'm like, I'd okay, so costume, trick next or treat. House. Yeah. This continued as a trend. <laughs> he I would mean, try it. And I mean, I did up nice. I like painted my arms and shit. Like I, I tried to make a decent, legitimate, homemade costume. What were you? A troll. <laughs> no, for Halloween. <laughs> a bigger troll. There you have it, folks. That's actually perfect. If you're going to go trick-or-treating as an adult this year, just put on like the internet troll face mask. <laughs> Insert trollface.jpg. Put on the 404 error as a giant just band over your head. So the topic for today, we picked a hell of a spooky topic for you. Or a hell of a spooky topic for you, as they say in California. <laughs> the ghost type. It's our first attempt at covering an entire type. Types. Yes, ghost. folks, types. Those things that make Pokemon different from one another. Here we're going to explore one of the, I believe there are 15, or were there 18. 16, 18? 18. Ah, fuck this. Cut that whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, of course, as we've stated before, one of my favorite types. And one of the types I just generally hang around with. Ghosts? And yes. Yeah, Gotta have a haunter. Haunter's like the best ghost ever. So it, you always have a ghost, basically, more or less. When I get to choose my team, and I'm not restricted because, darn, you're gonna have someone who dives, and darn, you're gonna have someone who flies. Yes, yes, I do. I don't. I, I just don't care. About having a ghost? No, about having, okay, <laughs> this, so <laughs> having this thing that flies and this thing that surfs. Which is why me was amazing. HM Slave to the rescue. Yeah. Well, there's... There's a reason for it because you want to be able to get around. It makes transportation easier. And because of type balancing and team balancing, I mean, I know you have your radical strategies for the way that you build teams. I'm not saying this as a condescending thing or anything. I'm just saying that. But in general. Oh, oh, no. You see, in Omega and Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire. That's the one. They have a thing called the Eon Flute. And I love this so much because you use it and you summon either Letios or Letias from wherever they are on he the planet. He said that shit so wrong. Yeah, Latios or Latias or Lediba. You summon Lediba. <laughs> right. So you take the things which are essentially Pokemon jets and they come swooping down from the sky, pick you up and you fly in real time across the face of the region. Right. Which was a nice addition. but Thor, it's right? Yeah. No, Sora's the Eon no, flute. No, 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 no. The Eon flute is a thing 
that actually summons these creatures and you ride on them. Yeah, you and you can them. actually go to even hidden places that don't exist in access of anywhere else. Yeah, I know. I thought that's what Soar was. No. Yeah, essentially. Yeah. If, if it was called a Soar function previously, then yes, it's that. Was Soar an X and Y? No. No. Uh, so no. then, yeah, that has to be, because maybe that's just what it's called in Japan. I don't know. I, this is what happens when you work too much and do too many podcasts to actually play the games. You just buy them and they sit in your DS case. Poser! No. <laughs> um, maybe a little. 2v1, you're a poser. Sorry, Nate. No, I, I, because I live this shit and not, see, by <laughs> key, keyword live this shit, not play every game that comes out. I am a Pokemon trainer. I have the Pokemon that I have trained and formed a bond with. Not everybody's out to catch them all, okay? Professor Oak hired a couple kids to, to, to go try to catch them all. That was a very specific mission for very specific characters. What do you think, Internet? Leave your comments under the description. <laughs> He's a poser. Nintendo of America says, gotta catch them all. And we have plushes of all 768 at our online merch store. And I really hope that's true. I hope Still looking to get a Leafy on plushie. Dude, I was at the Pokemon store like two weeks ago. You should have told me. I would have got you one. (laughs) They had everything but Espeon and Umbreon. Tell me why, Nintendo, the two best ones were not there. Because they sold out, Phil. No, they weren't. I got the right one to fucking open that morning. Tell me they sold out when I was the first fucking customer in the store. Tell because me. Because all the employees I will tell reserved you them. that I have worked somewhere where they ship those EV dolls and they come in a package that contains one of each. So maybe the employees bogarted them. This was the Nintendo fucking store in Rockefeller fucking, I don't know if it's center or square, in New York fucking city. Fucking. So maybe. No excuses. Phil, maybe they sold them the day before you got there. Nintendo store. They should be shipments every day. Fuck, they should make them there. Phil, did you ask anyone to check the back? No. (laughs) I don't like to do that because the fucking, the trick is there is nothing in the back. Well, Phil. It's the Nintendo store. They should have it Nintendo just, they, based it's like re- the replicators. They come they do come though and they don't have their own separate SKUs even. They come well, in no, one no. big I, box. Umbreon is almost always one of the it's like the first one to go. Jolteon and Espeon maybe are like second. Oh, Sylveon usually goes pretty fast too. Ugh. But there was like no no, I'm like I'm not even kidding, dude. They had like displays, like those little carousel displays that you have in some of those stores. Completely fucking packed like every tier all the way around okay was one. well you should have asked to see if if they had anything it would have in the said back. no i just know it he's he's there with just the saddest most sad puppy expression right now i got a ganon in me but i'm a badass fuck y'all <laughs> well before we get into the topic there was a few things i wanted to discuss first and foremost we got a fan response to our gender episode i know we're a few episodes late getting back it's been crazy busy working on episode 100 of Fairpoint and all that but nick aka at ace of cups on twitter hit us up again do episodes have genders he did an episode on genders yeah you're yeah uh, are you serious right now uh, oh 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 episode on genders me and lydia did an episode about gender about pokemon gender about the way gender is represented and treated in the pokemon universe and in this episode we were discussing how a lot of pokemon specifically things like starters and giveaways and stuff are like 80 90 percent male and you have to really try hard to find to get a female you have to keep soft resetting or breeding Lydia and I were thinking maybe it's just, oh, well, you know, they wanted to give people boy versions of their starters because boys were playing the games. And it's a very, very obvious oversight on our part that the reason they do that, as Nick tells us, in reference to pokey gender, rare pokies tend to be male because in breeding, eggs take the mother species. It makes it harder to breed rarer Pokemon. I'm only like 10 minutes into the episode, so this might be covered. No, it's not. But FYI, that's why most Pokies have a higher male percentage than females. Like, starters are highly male, so it's hard to breed them without a ditto. I would like to also point out that you don't usually run across a ditto until after you hit the breeding. So, oh, shit, he's right. No, no, there's... Fuck. No, he's right. Ditto were around the breeding area, weren't they? Ditto and Meowth? Um, yeah. Tip, some, some of them, but a lot of the generations, you, you hit it all after the Elite Four anyway, so it's kind of a moot point. Yeah. Even, even in, um, in X and Y... Even to get a ditto there, you have to get to the Mirage Forest or whatever the hell it's called. 
And to get a ditto, you have to basically have already beaten all eight gym leaders, or at least right. gotten to the eighth gym. Right. Well, the, the reason they did it is because the game was not designed around uh, maxing out your EVs and IVs, which is what the breeding centers are generally but, used for by the greater population. You, you get dittos way earlier in Red and Blue, the first game. So uh, Safari Zone. You right? get them maybe in the Safari Zone. I know you can get them. Uh, no, in, no, because ditto doesn't transform into you. You can get them in the Celadon Mansion. I, I know you can get them out in the fields. I really think you can get them by the breeding center. Yeah, no, you can. No, because Red and Blue didn't have a breeding center. Well, and you can look it up if you are so inclined. Moving on. We really neglected talking about breeding a lot on that episode, which is kind of an oversight because that's a big part of gender that could have been discussed. But we discussed so much, and breeding could have its own episode. So I'm hoping, Phil, I know you've done a lot of breeding, so we've got to... We will hit on that topic, don't worry. Do that topic, and... uh, I've had such a pain in the ass with breeding. I just don't care about breeding enough to put that much energy in it. All right, come on that episode or listen to it when we're done. You'll be a master just like me. Hashtag okay, registered, like not actually a master. <laughs> yeah, I got a lot of theories or ideas or just ponderings that I'd like to touch on with that. And there's a lot of gameplay things that you'd be able to help us out with too. Yep, uh, that's what I'm here for. Anyway. And there's one more thing I thought we could talk about before we get into the Halloween-y topic. <laughs> We're a little late on this too. Pokemon Go has been announced recently, and everybody's all up in a tizzy about that. Ah! Oh, my oh my God, yes. All the microtransactions. Oh, my God, yes. Pokemon Go. I saw this thing on Facebook for it. I was just like, wait. I can actually go out into my backyard and see what the hell is there. It's just going to be a Caterpie. Don't get excited. What did you see? The trailer? Yeah. Okay. Like where they're showing the big like Mewtwo brawl off in like Tokyo. Yeah, but what about the people who don't live in New York City? Or Tokyo. Or Tokyo. That trailer was great. It was a great trailer. A great filmed and awesome trailer. Judging it on a tra- as its merits as a trailer. Fantastic. Hype! <laughs> uh, but yeah, hype. I think everyone needs to calm the fuck down. It was a good trailer. That's all it was. It was also a poor trailer in the fact that it didn't show the fucking game because it's a fucking app game. So everybody should chill the fuck out. I don't think we're going to see Pokemon walking around in our backyards. I don't think it... Okay, first of all, that might not necessarily be true. When you're looking on the 3DS, when you're playing in the... um, When you're playing in the contests for uh, smartness and whatnot... They actually produce on the screen by using the DS's internal camera settings Mm -hmm. a clear background of what, like, your room or wherever you are looks like with the Pokemon standing there. It is fully feasible that when you're playing, they will show that Pokemon in your area. Well, the the 3DS itself has a really amazing game with the cards that you put down and a dragon. You fight a dragon that sits on your table. So, yes, it's possible. But that's also the 3DS. We're talking smartphones. I mean, I guess if you pop open the app it'll use the camera to show you what's there and then it could digitize in the pokemon or whatever just over top but again the the resources behind that are not something you'd be able to fit into an app well for one do they have 3d cameras the phone they don't need 3d cameras they just have to throw an image over top of what you're already seeing but the reason that the 3ds one works so well is because it has a 3d camera so it's able to figure out the depth and everything of what you're looking at and place the thing in a place that it looks somewhat realistic that it doesn't look real but it looks like wow the way it interacts with the surroundings oh well yeah right but you you can also get uh, image recognition software for a regular camera that can do much the same thing where phil is saying an overlap again this is a free app right like let's let's be real microtransactions are coming yeah i actually read the uh, article for that it's starting free they don't they hypostulate it as free but we don't know where it's going to go down the line as phil said microtransactions brace yourselves they have microtransactions all been transactions are yes 999 just to play once a month but it's true and they also showed these amazing little pins that you can wear in other places 
that I think are supposed to help with with the data transfer issues uh, with the rest of the game. I haven't heard of those. I know there's what? like a there's like a it's it's like They're a not Bluetooth exactly phone watches watch thing. It's a little Pokeball thing. It's right? like this little Pokeball pin, but instead of it being completely round, it has like a thing kind of like yeah. It's got the little tail end on it. We know what you're talking about. Yeah, but it, it's a little accessory that comes with it that is supposed to like help or it may what it does probably required. What it does is you so you don't have to have your phone out all the time and be looking at it all the time it It'll lights vibrate. up or buzzes when there's a pokemon around and lets you know hey you might want to pull your phone out and look at the app and that's what i mean like i don't care if i can't actually see the bulbasaur sitting in front of me i realize that iphone technology does not have the ability to make me hallucinate yet, yet. however i will be able to wander around the world get an alert from this little pin open my thing and it will tell me your backyard contains like 37 Pikachus or like one really half retarded ditto. Kick fest. Kick fest. It's just the hyperbole that, that's getting thrown around with this. Like every article I see that says like the future of Pokemon is here. No, 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 no. Shut your mouth. The future of Pokemon is still really great 3DS games. It's not fucking app games on your phone. I'm sorry, but that even if that game is really cool and successful and awesome, it's not going to be a new Pokemon game. I'm sorry. A new Pokemon game is still going to be way cooler. It's going to introduce new Pokemon. It's going to have a new story with gym leaders, and it's they're going to do even more effort to the next story like they keep doing every generation. Uh, I'm so, going to have to ask you to go ahead and just calm down right there. We but, all know the future's on the NX. Let's, let's just get that out of the way right now. No. Handheld systems are still... The NX is going to be a handheld system. It's a combination between the two. Oh, okay. It's, it's kind of, think the operating theory about some people, and the internet's going to disagree with me on this one, is um, think Wii U, think tablet. Think tablet goes anywhere, or think tablet is 3DS. You can take it anywhere, and it's, it's essentially like Bluetooth to your 3DS. So you're getting console graphics on a handheld system, I think. That's the operating theory. So, either way, that's still an adaptive technology similar to some eye technology, like iPad, iPhone, um, Mac Man. boards, whatever the hell you're calling them now. So, that actually does point, actually, in reverse to your, your opinion, is that eventually the future of technology is more about handhold and handheld things much like iPhones or other such no, smart devices. Yes, it is a handheld device. No, like. What and, he's and saying is that. it's going to be on a dedicated console, not on smartphones. Yeah, the future of, of Pokemon games is not apps that you download on your smartphone. I'm sorry. You may, you may believe that, but the trending but, of technology shows that a that, lot of companies are feeding a, into okay, the app future. mentality. Okay, maybe a distant future. Right. But it's too soon to be saying the future of Pokemon. Pokemon Go is not the future of Pokemon. It's It it's, could be an, a healthy indicator if that's where the company decides to go. Let's be real. Pokemon Go is an experiment. Everybody, chill the fuck out. Well, they, it's the first game in their partnership with this app developer that's going to be making more Nintendo-based app games. And hopefully they're good. I'm not being... Everyone... Not everyone, but I'm not... I don't have a smartphone. I don't do the whole thing. But... I'm just trying to be realistic that how many times have we seen a trailer and been like, oh my God, I'm a burger, and that's Pokemon a Stadium. Burger. Yeah, and that's disappointing, and I get that. Pokemon but Stadium. But still, there's a difference between things being disappointing and Pokemon looking Coliseum. at the... Yeah, and then looking at the obvious of where technology is heading. And more and more of our like micro technologies, fast processing, but data sharing is going towards these very smartphone like it's devices also like, let's wait till we see the game people let's wait till we see the game before we start sucking this game's dick like, stop speculating and wait for the game <laughs> i i'm not even speculating necessarily the difference i have no, is that no 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 that's no, what i mean is no, i do not. but this isn't where my where my heart of the issue comes from my heart of the issue comes from the fact that I do see that more and more people delve into this smartphone stuff. They spend so much money on it. They spend so much time on it. They have, I think they have syndromes that they call uh, iPhone neck or something like that, where you get cricks in your neck from looking down for so long at your, your, your smartphone That's screen. Just stupid people. And then they have another syndrome called Pokemon Go neck, where you get a crick in your neck from sucking this game's dick and you haven't even <laughs> seen any footage yet. And, and, all, <laughs> and all I'm saying 
is that that very well might indicate where they're going to invest more of their future developments. Yes. And- because here's the thing. If they can just... If they can spend as minimal amount of money... And make as much through microtransactions... As they can, then they will do that for the sake of a healthy profit margin. So if they can spend less time developing new handheld gizmos and devices and tech, and if they can spend more time developing games because someone else has already made a good mainframe for data sharing, connecting to each other. I mean, we talk to each other on Facebook all the time through a smartphone. And if they can do this, the the technology has even been showing with uh, events like the Pokemon uh, websites where you can actually go into like the dream zone. You can do not just regular basic pokemon interactions off the games but you can actually go into the dream zone and like they do farmville like stuff and that's officially part of like the console systems right so they're showing all of these different parallels where they're shifting more towards mainframe internet style app usage type mentality in their game structures right but we'll we'll move off the technology here for a second the the game as it stands or as it has been shown if you take apart the trailer it's on your smartphone your only interaction is with the world or with other people there's no gym leaders there's no quest there's no storyline it's at it's, the end of the it's day yes app. it's going to be an app and you'll collect pokemon and there'll be uh, the battles. It wouldn't be that difficult to make the battles as no, engaged no. as they are in the game. You could but, write that into the app easy. But, but here's the difference: but, they then challenge you as the player to be the gym leaders, to be your own adventure. They haven't decided that yet. No, 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 or not there, literally. There but hasn't that's, been news on it yet, though. That, what that's Jeremy's what, saying is that in the real world, they are challenging you to go. Your fandom is going to develop in the sense that no. People aren't going to just set up their own gyms, but it's like, no, but now you're actually going out there. with. But the thing is, I already view that in the games. And yes, the games give us a story and we're playing the story, but like by that's why to me I have an overarching view of the games as like, well, that's just the, the place that I keep the Pokemon I've caught. And the game is just kind of a depiction for me to focus this journey that's been going on in, in, the, imag- in the realm of imagination. And, exactly uh, and, and that and now what this game is challenging is that you still have that and this app is still the same thing where you keep your pokemon and but now your journey is your own on that app and they're they're on that app and the thing happens on the app but there's still pokemon that i've trained on fire red that are on my fucking x and y game and like that is the future of pokemon is that i will trade those to the next fucking 3ds game and i think it's pre- presumptuous of these news articles to be like this is the future of pokemon or people like it's not it's it, as at the end of the day, it's going to be Pokemon Go is what it's going to be. Like uh, if you ask me, whether it's good or bad, at the end of the day, it's Pokemon Go, and it, the the core Pokemon series will continue. Right, and I see it as the tiptoes, like the baby steps towards looking at a future progress of the Pokemon games. I don't necessarily see it as directly translated as the future, like this, where they're going to put all their effort. But this is a good baby step indicator of where the potential future of the franchise is. I I understand and I agree. It's just not how it's being. (laughs) It's not how it's being treated by people on Facebook or uh, actual legitimate journalists. (laughs) Because let's face it this way: how many times have we stood around saying, "If you could put a Pokemon in the real world to follow around with you"? I saw an article the other day that was like. Finally, what you dreamed of, your wildest dreams as a child, are finally coming true. And I'm like, no. When I was a kid, I wasn't like, man, I love playing Pokemon. But I wish, instead of looking at it on a small screen on my Game Boy, I could. I wish phones had screens so I could look at it on a small screen on my phone and have less of a story and less things to do on it. No, that's not what I thought. I know there's more. I'm, be, I'm being a little bit reductionist because you can go out in the world and it interacts with the world. But still, like... You know, I don't where's know. the breeding center? <laughs> Listen, no, no. Um, what I'm saying though is like this is what I like to do in the games. I will get the team I like, plan out who I'm going to do, and then I go to the breeding center and I figure out their EVs and IVs and make them good. That's how I play the game. And then I crush the opposition. How am I going to do that if I have to actually, you know, oh. catch them randomly? You're going to have to work, Phil. I thought I you do were... work. I thought you were just like six minutes behind and still trying to figure out if Ditto could be found there. <laughs> Funny. Funny. And well, we also don't know if your Pokemon 
can't be transferred to Pokemon Go. Remember that there's now this uh, online data harvester for your excessive Pokemon called Pokebank. They may develop a Pokemon Go link that goes to your Pokebank. We'll see. You have no idea. Missing we'll though. See. Crashes Pokemon Go all over the world. And if they do, that does that goes to still back up my point that like, well, the future of Pokemon is still the core Pokemon games because you're Beating taking Indigo. You're still taking the Pokemon from Pokemon Go and transferring them to your games. So. Also, um, relatively... But only because they've been doing this since forever. Only because they've been doing this since forever. When they develop a new technology, they try as much as they can with the current technologies to make them compatible and meshable. Yeah, so but... they did this with Pokemon Color and whatnot. I was going to say, it's almost entirely sure that they're not going to let you take everything that you've flavored over for the past 10 years and just dump it into a brand new app and start trashing everybody that you come across. Just throwing that out there. You don't know that. You don't know that. You're saying use the Pokemon from your games in Pokemon Go? Right. If they let you transfer that, you're just going to start trashing everybody you come across. I didn't think they were going to do that. I was thinking (sighs) take the Pokemon from Pokemon Go into your games. No, I was thinking what he he saw. Hmm. Okay. Interesting if you put it in the reverse, though. All right. uh, um, Thus began... Phil's alternate life. Interesting. If you put it in the reverse. Never mind. Yeah, that was, whatever. That was okay. I'm Ghost gonna... types. Woo. 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 Let's do it. Ghost type Pokemon. Jeremy, since Silf Radio started, I said we're going to do a ghost type Pokemon episode one day because I know you love ghost type Pokemon and, and you have some interesting theories on them. My God. It's finally happened. I've got nothing. All right, so Ghost Pokemon. I love them so much. I have Ew. A, I have alternate ego trainer persona for these guys. I have a dedication to these things. I love what they're all about. And then more of the recent games started showing different angles and avenues, which kind of at first seems to put a test against my theory about Ghost Pokemon, but not necessarily. Okay, and there were only a few ghost Pokemon. There was one ghost family in the first gen. Yeah. They introduced one ghost Pokemon that didn't even evolve in the second gen. (laughs) And then... uh... And then finally they were able to make a legendary of what I've always wanted. Giratina? Yeah, my ghost dragon. And they had to make it a legendary because... Fuck, there's so many crossbred dragons from other types. Let's be real. Typing ghost dragon. Do you see it as anything else? Let's be real. Let's, huh? Yes. Real? No, full of crap. That's no, I'm why. not. Ghost and dragon, not a legendary. Don't I, see it happening. You know what? They made dark and ghost, and that should have fucking been legendary at the time in which it was made. A thing, a thing with and no Sableye. type weakness when it first came out. That shit should have been legendary. No, it was but given. No. It's no. not a dragon. <laughs> oh, 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 because Dratini, Dratini is a dragon. Dratini and that... was hailed as, not Dratini, but Dragonite was hailed as legendary in the first games until it became widespread how to get him. Yeah, and that doesn't mean that it is legendary, Phil. No, it's just hailed as a legendary because it's a, pseudo... it's a fucking dragon. It's a pseudo-legendary. It's an uber. That's like a, kind of like a class of Pokemon. Dragonite's yeah. not in no. Uber. Well, no. Not I think anymore, he is but Multis when he game. first was out, he no, was no, concerned. No, okay, Uber. we're getting off the topic. Point is, typing of Ghost and Dragon is too cool to not be legendary. The developers couldn't fit it in there. Would you feel justice if they made a piece of shit little Ghost Dragon and he was like, yeah, I'm like skin yes. blowing off the bones and I'm retarded, yes. but I'm not legendary. Then I, like, okay, I would okay, own okay. a skeletal ghost, dragon. Ghost version of Dunsparce. Would you like it? No. Yes. No. You would kick that little retarded thing into the dirt. <laughs> All right, so basically what this all boils down to is you just wish there was a ghost dragon that wasn't legendary. Yeah, because I... He's allowed to wish that, Phil. Yeah, because I want totally 
to be able to have my little buddy that I can bring into friendly battles with my friends who's a ghost dragon. I would love to have that instead of everyone complaining, oh no, you have Giratina. And I'm like, I only have Giratina because it's the only available ghost dragon I have. You're allowed to wish that, but at the same time, Phil does have a realistic perspective that if they make a ghost-type dragon, it's probably going to be a legendary or at the very least a pseudo-legendary. But you're saying... Of course, I'd even take a pseudo legendary because everybody battles with ubers and pseudo legendaries. Yeah, but people generally, when you bring an actual legendary into your team, they're just like, no, that no. Yep, I'm one of them. I'm sorry. No, you you can't do that. Yeah, and that's exactly who I'm referring to. <laughs> and I'm just like, I I wouldn't mind having a usable Pokemon that I can use with my friends because Pokemon's great, but I also like it as a social experience. Why don't you just go hug a Pumpkaboo? I do, frequently. At night. What is the next spot? What is... Um, Pumpkaboo. I'd really like, so long as we're on the topic of ghost Pokemon we'd like to see, I would really like to see a ghost Eevee evolution. That would be fucking Um, amazing. Okay, cool, but since we're throwing our hat in the ring, ghost psychic. Calling it now. Best Pokemon ever. There already is. Eh? Wait, what? Hoopa. Hoop, Hoopa. That's a legendary, though. It's still a Pokemon. What the hell is a Hoopa? Hoopa oh, it's does. like this genie thing with three hoops. Yeah. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> I take that back. Let me revise that. A cool ghost psychic. Oh, dude. Hoopa's dope. It's No, he's not. His name is Hoopa. Moving on. It's got a little... Um... Dude, this like this thing can produce warps in time, okay. space, and reality in its one? rings. Well, it's got one... It's got a form... It's got a regular... Actually, no, I don't want one. He'd be like... Give me a second. It's got its you know, base form or whatever, but then it has an unbound form where if you get the certain item, you can use its unbound form. And its unbound... Its base form is like small and kind of cute and mischievous looking. Its unbound form is like epic and intimidating and like something you would see if you were in India on an acid trip. Well, no, because it's like a gin, which is like... So like Robin of- Williams, phenomenal cosmic power! Yes. <laughs> Space. Yes, exactly. It's it's insane. It's such a badass Pokemon that in X and Y, when you go through the Eon Flute travels, you actually see indicators of its power because you can find other legendaries outside of the region, including like the three lions and whatnot. So that's what those hoops are. Those hoops are from Hoopa. Okay, He's so, able to do that okay, to the so world. How do I get a hoop? I don't have one. I think the only way to get him is to hack at this point, right? Possibly. I don't know. I think he was an event release, so yeah. Oh, man, I freaking hate those. And then everyone's going to be like, I want to level 100, uh, right, whatever the dark one is. Dark ride. Oh, no, they don't even want level 100s now. They want you to be able to like, give them to them at level 1. Yeah, I want a level 1 dark ride. <laughs> Good luck with that, douchebags on the GTS. So, the ghost type. So... 4.8% of all Pokemon are ghost type Pokemon, tying it with ice as the rarest type of Pokemon around. I take it back. Um, fighting and ghost. That would be baller. Fighting ghost? Fighting that ghost would, would be, be baller. Cool. That would be. I would love would to see get... something that's kind of like a ghostly samurai style thing. They haven't done a lot of samurai style. That would style. be ghost steel, which you have your sword for. N- no, no, no. Like, legit. It's f- Samurai are still fighting types. I want. No, they're not. They're steel. Um, anyway, I was thinking like Ghost Hitmonlee or Ghost Hitmonchan or something like that. No, because Freaking even baller. even Oshwat turns into like this semi like samurai thing. I still think a ghostly like Hitmonlee or Hitmonchan would make a better ghost fighting. Just just throwing that out there. We can't all revive Andre the Giant and make him our Pokemon, okay? What? Andre the Giant, pro wrestler. What Princess does that have Bob. to do with Hitmonlee and Hitmonchan? Yes, we are. All right, so despite what we want to see. Which is interesting because I think of dragon as being kind of like the rarest type, but they've made so many dragons in the last few generations that it's not anymore. Yeah, because it's hype ba- because it's hype based. Dragons are quote badass, and they're gonna go for that cool factor. I mean, who hasn't wanted to have their own dragon as their personal like buddy? I haven't. Just quiet. Yeah, Phil. right. Shut up, Phil. <laughs> I was like, I was never 12. Sorry, guys. No, that was that was always my older brother's deal. He was like, oh, Dragonite, Dragonite, Dragonite. I was like, um, I learned size punch. Jinx, I'll run Jinx. No. And <laughs> Jinx was really not When you were a child, cool. you never thought, man, it would be cool to have a dragon, no. like pre-Pokemon? 
No, I was never like mythical dragons. Fuck never out. really. Get the fuck out of here. All right, fine, whatever. Refuse well, no, he, to he accept br- that people he, are different. He brings up a good point that he had a sibling. I never had a brother, right? And he had a healthy sibling rivalry. And so some of his motivations can be from that rivalry. So he's like, my like brother's Luigi. obsessed with dragons. What am I going to do to just grind that son of a bitch into the dirt? Well, no, he, he wants to go here and have type uniformity. I'm going to exploit a weakness. Yeah. And I have four siblings, so that's why I don't like anything. I just... ha! Well, nothing left over for you, huh? <laughs> but anyway, uh, moving on from what we want them to be, ghostly samurais, uh, holy hitmonlees, and moving on from there, we should all at least start where Ghost started. And I'm talking Ground Zero, Lavender Town. You can't have ghosts, at least canonically, without death. There's no mention of them beforehand, and the only place that they show up is where there are graves. So we can safely assume that they come from the souls of the dearly departed beloved friends. Discuss. So, I completely refuted that. I, I do not believe that at all. Well, this is a little tricky because, okay, Phil, you're saying let's, you're saying let's take it back to the, the base roots when they first created ghost type, when there was only one generation Three ghost Pokemon that belong to the same family. They all were. They all came from Lavender Town. And, and let's look at it through that lens. Yes, let's look at it through that lens. This is where you look at where do the ghost types exist. I get it's only one family. They're kind of sparse. Only 150 to work with. To me, but this is where they came from. They were all centralized in this area. What is this area's main feature? Pokemon Tower. Figure out that they're only in there for what reason? Draw your own conclusions. I've just come to this one, and it makes sense to me. Well. In the first generation, I would have been pretty much totally with Jeremy. I would have been speculating, like, are they the the spirits of deceased Pokemon? But I would have settled with, no, I don't think they are. Ghastly, Gengar, Haunter, they're all gaseous, poison, cloud, spirit-esque Pokemon. And I would see them more as just like, well, they're spirit type more than ghost type. And that they're still a reproducing population of creatures and not just like, oh, dead people that, you know... See, I don't even necessarily see them as reproducing so much as spawning. Even if they have male and female types, and I get that they have eggs, but it's hmm. almost more like it's Excuse it's me. spawning from the essence of the Excuse other me. place. A breeding population. Right. Is that better? Yeah, I, I guess. They reproduce by <laughs> no, budding. To be honest, no, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> but no, and and I get that. They are found near places of death, but that only makes sense if you are a spirit-based creature. You're going to be around the places that have heavy utility towards emotion, psychic imprints, impressions of intense emotional strife or trauma. You're you're going to find these things. At a daycare. Yeah. You're, you're going to find these things as far as like what you were saying with the original 151, you're going to find them in places where they are most at home, like anyone else's natural environment. Right. I mean, I, I get where you're coming from, but let's also stop and say that breeding wasn't around in Gen 1. So right. we can't use that as a viable factor and say that they are a breeding population at that point. What I was saying is that's how I would have perceived them in Gen 1. That, All right, that's fair. That I, in, Okay, Gen 1, my, my, I had a very rigid perception of what Pokemon were. They were breeding populations of creatures that were out there in that wild, majestic world. Yes, they were magical and whatever, but that's what they were. So, ghost. So, like a Pokemon, like the, the what is it, Kink Link or whatever, the key. Yeah, Clink. That, um, that, that thing's not Clef-key. a ghost type. Clef-key. That thing's not a ghost type, though. Klefki. Yeah. No. No. I'm saying, but something like that would not really have fit in with my idea of Pokemon. Well, maybe it would have because Magnemite exists and all this, but. Um, any Pokemon that has an origin, you know what I mean? Um, that, For example, Cubone, it kind of bugged me because I'm like, so every, what did Cubone's moms just die? They must just die during childbirth, you know, because I'd be like, how can, so, because that's how I viewed them. They were, they were populations of animals, except for the legendaries. Right. So I, I, it, didn't, it didn't mean that I, I was verifying that they, they are breeding, but like, that's just how, like how I saw what Pokemon were. And I think that is a cultural difference between like my American interpretation and perception of it and a Japanese cultural interpretation and perception of it who has the foundation of their mythology and culture, you know, to, to inform 
right. a different idea of what these creatures represent. Right, right. Personally, though, my thought was ghosts were kind of just chucked in there because let's acknowledge that something happens after we die. That that is, I'm, I'm just gonna I'm gonna run on this for a second. Um, I felt like that. Up until I hit the Elite Four, and then Agatha was there. And okay, these buggers are something to be reckoned with. But up until that point, I was like, oh, it's just an afterthought. They're ghosts. Hey, it's kind of cool. I got a haunter. He looks baller. He can beat up psychics, you know, whatever. And then I come up to Agatha, and she's like super strong. And I'm like, oh, uh, I didn't think this through well enough. So here was here's what I've kind of been picking over when it comes to like my theory about ghost types and even how it's progressed and evolved with the later generations and the newer ghost type Pokemon they have, right? I believe in a spiritual place that that exists for like ghost types. Like oh. like an yeah, no, like an ethereal plane of sorts. A place where ghost types move through this is why they can phase through walls and whatnot. They have just an access to that place. And it's closely tied to associated places of great strife, emotional turmoil, struggle. Right. And so these Pokemon come and derive not from just breeding or dead souls, but are more like spawned or manifested in that place and take up residence within these these key forms and then these ghost types are spawned. It's it's something that's also related to not even ghost types, but Pokemon in general in a later generation with um I believe it's called uh Crystal Cave or Magnetic Cave. But um where where one of the professors talks about the fact that there are even Pokemon that spawn because of the advent of human actions in the world. Pokemon that never were before suddenly spawn because of something human beings have done to the environment. Um, talking about specifically Kling Klang. Never, yeah, never existed until humans started inventing technology. And I believe that ghost Pokemon are most strongly resem- are represented in this methodology and if you look at japanese culture you have far more spirit beings than ghosts you have spirit beings that are like flame-throwing umbrella demons and demons are synonymous with spirits and you have all these different creatures which manifest and are called spirits and ghosts but did not come from the dearly departed so yes and i think though in pokemon a lot of those spirits and ideas are expressed Through various types of Pokemon. Dragons would be considered spirits, but they're expressed as dragon types in Pokemon. Um, If they made a Pokemon... They have a Pokemon based on the Kitsune, Ninetales. And that's inspired by a spirit. It's obviously meant to evoke that type of mythology. But that's represented as a fox. You know what I mean? And Right, but then there's Kitsune... And then there's the uh, Japanese fox god. And they haven't done that one the regardless what i'm saying is um well let me just keep going with it um now the ghost type is first of all we have to acknowledge that it is called ghost type and ghost does have a pretty specific english definition it's not just in a general vague spirit it's or ethereal being it's the spirit of a deceased person and most ghost pokemon now i'm saying all six generations, a lot of them, almost all of them, not all of them, but most of them have some type of separate origin. A discarded doll, a child that was lost in the forest, a woman that was lost in the mountains. Wait, wait, child child lost in forest, who's that? The tree one from the last gen. The the tree thing? Yeah. The, Dude, that's so cool. It's a grass ghost, yeah. Uh, child, uh, well, supposedly it's children that were lost in the forest and died in the forest became, their spirits became these Pokemon. That's... Suggest that, but not necessarily verified. Actually, hold on. Sorry, it's just because I'm getting to that and it's just moving too quickly. Uh, It's not your fault. You have no idea that that's what I was getting to, but like I am and I just want to piece by piece get there. I'm sorry. Um, uh, The empty shell from a ninjask. Um, Almost always, not always, but very commonly it's something that's been discarded. So not even always a life that was lost, but something that was lost or discarded, the spirit of which takes form uh, as from that loss. Uh, Also, these could just be legends. Like, 
maybe it wasn't we don't know that it was women that were lost in the mountains or children that were lost in the forest like that could just be folk tales that aren't true we with the pokemon world we tend to take those things a little bit more at face value than we would in the real world uh, even though you got a point <laughs> as i'm going to discuss later there are some very clearly fictional things in the pokemon world too and this could just be a legend about these things right and to branch off of that it actually, again, still goes towards my psychology about ghost types. A discarded ninjask shell. Ghosts are not just the deceased. It's more like a sense of loss or a sense of mourning or so, the gravity of transition from one thing to another or losing something that you once held dear. So that sense of loss or transition manifests as an actual metaphysical being? It's, right. Well, that a is consciousness. Death, especially if you look at Eastern... Um, religions and philosophies and theology like you were dying all the time every day death right. is always happening that is death a, a loss and a change right but now that now that there's a void left it has its own consciousness manifested i don't understand kind, kind of like how different... poison types manifest because of concentrations of human filth you get muck or grimer poison types manifest off of the filth from mankind's doings much in the same way senses of tragedy or loss manifest because of this concentrated essence of loss Curious. they have to invest in some sort of manifestation so, and that ends up being so ghost types what were these ghosts before they interacted with the massive void of loss and became a manifested consciousness of well loss i would assume that they would be a undisclosed mass of pokemon potential similar. they were power type pokemon no <laughs> something that couldn't Something that could not be until it had a function, a form, a purpose. So the, a thing which was unrealized, a thing which itself was discarded, forgotten, could not be. And they do, a lot of ghost type Pokemon feed off of intangible like feelings and stuff. They feed off of uh, wishes for vengeance. They feed off of sadness or fear. Or Some even joy. Off life force. What was that? Or even joy. Yeah. Um, who feeds off joy? Like Banette and Shuppet, they actually are constantly re-looking for the child that discarded them as a toy. But they, they, uh, they feed off vengeance. Right, and they do, but it's more like they feed off their own desire for vengeance because right. they've been discarded. And what that really shows <laughs> is this... <laughs> Brock's like... Who feeds off of joy? I want to feed off of joy. Anyway, he's got La. the chopsticks, the sushi. Uh, he's got a line of cocaine. Uh, and yes, they feed off vengeance, but that's more like their own personal sense of vengeance. And it shows this kind of, in their essence, a childish mentality because they were so loved by that child who then sets them down. What they really are is they're missing that love and attention that has now been stripped from them because of a sense of abandonment. So it's more like, it's not that they're feeding off of vengeance, but they are attracted to vengeance because it mirrors their own desires. Well, the point I was building up to, though, is that a lot of them do feed off those intangible feelings and stuff, and that we are protein. Basically, it's what we are. Like, um, that's exactly, that's what we're made of, and that's what we ingest to keep ourselves from deteriorating and wasting away, we have to ingest that which we are made of in order to keep ourselves alive. So that totally works with your idea that ghost Pokemon are created from, you know, the feeling of loss or the experience itself of loss and not something concrete and, and tangible and made of matter, you know? Right. So that even if you get something like, um, I believe the Pokemon is Conflagris or Cofagrigus, the coffin one, right? Yeah, the one that's based off of the Egyptian mask, always looking for its face, right? That's your mask. That's your mask, his he's, predecessor. He's not looking for his face, but it, it, the Pokedex outright says they used to be, they used to be humans, people, human beings, and that the mask they carry is their face, and sometimes they look at it and cry, yeah. and then it evolves to Cofagrigus. Yes, and that. In that vein, they also say that uh, the base of Alakazam was once a species that evolved from human children who desired to be Pokemon. So Wait, you're saying Abra used to be a little brat? Yes, actually. Abrat. Ha ha, I get really? it. Yes. I don't remember that. What? I just remember it saying something about its IQ being super high. No, 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 the base form. Yeah. Abra. 
was stated to have come from children who wished to be Pokemon. Where... A child that one day woke up and... Was. Yes. A sleeping, lazy, super intellectual Pokemon. Was this in the anime, Jeremy? Uh, I don't believe so. It's not in the game. I'm pretty sure you can find it. The internet will tell us. Trust me, just give it a couple weeks. Yeah. There we go. Somebody online is saying... No credible sources. This myth is busted. All right, in Fire Red, somebody said it happened one morning. A boy with extra sensory powers awoke in bed transformed into Kadabra. So it doesn't say that all the Abras come from that, but that once a child did. So to me, I think that says that it was just something that happened, not that that's the source of that species. The kid was an Abra the whole time. Okay. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> To and me, it says the kid was actually an Abra all along. Okay, so or then... You were the Abra. Or was he never there to begin with? <laughs> but no, even then, that shows that a strong enough manifestation of desire can transform... It doesn't say anything about if he wanted to be a cadaver. It just said that he turned into one. I don't know. I want to find this. I, I don't remember this. And I played Fire Red a few times... And I, this is just not popping in my memory. Where the fuck is it? It is rumored that a boy with psychic abilities suddenly transformed into Kadabra. So if I wake up tomorrow, I can be at Alec Okay. Lane. It was a Pokedex entry from Emerald. The Emerald Pokedex entry. It is rumored that a boy with psychic abilities suddenly transformed into a Kadabra while he was assisting research into extrasensory powers. So there you go. So, yeah, but that's like, that's like Goatman or Sheep Squatch. That's a story they tell. Again, or, we're going to talk about their fiction. And that's something – this this really brings it up. Like where do we draw the line between what is a culture myth, a, a cultural myth, and what is real? It's, it's tough to do in a fictional universe where magic exists. Right. And even then – and I get that, that it could be a, a spawn from that kind of thing, right? But then that – if you're going to discredit that, then you have to be able to equally be willing to discredit – the Pokedex, the Pokedex entry that says that this guy was dead and that this is his face and he looks at it and cries. Yeah. And there's a lot of things I want to discredit in the Pokedex. Like I'm, pretty, so, I'm pretty sure they say that Pikachu's 14 and a half feet tall, too. So I, uh, Wait, I are you for real? No, but I, I might as well say that. So when you're thinking of it that way, I also think that some ghost Pokemon manifest because of other things which are similarly forgotten or lost, like long dead beings like Egyptian pharaohs. These ghost Pokemon rise up and become their mourners because their people are no longer around to mourn them. Their loved ones are gone, and so something needs to be there to remember those who have passed. Well, let's, let's, take, let's stop for a second. Your mask, that mask he carries around, is his face. It's not a mask of his face. It says specifically it is his face. He carved the face off of his body and carries it with him. That's disgusting. I don't think it went so brutal as to say it carved off the face. Well, no, 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 but it doesn't say the mask he carries is of his face. It said it is yeah, his but that, face. But that's more like an interpretation of sentence structure. You sure about that? Yeah. You sure about that? English yeah. is pretty concrete about this kind of crap. Psych! No, no, that, that's exactly But the I point. feel like that's a distinction that would have been made by Game Freak when they're putting out After All This Is for Kids. I, I don't Isn't necessarily it? agree with that because kids don't look so deeply into grammatical sentence structures. I'm just saying, you've got to pick the stuff apart. What is the... the uh, what's the argument? Your mask, that the mask he carries around is not a mask. It's actually his own no, face. No, it represents the face. It's not the does actual... It, does it say represents? It's not like the Joker's the, face in fucking... Gotham and Batman. Does it say represents his face? It says, uh, I think it's almost typed Batman into Bulbapedia. <laughs> what did you find? There's a Batman reference in Pokemon. Like, legit, there is. I'm not going to ask. Gliger. Shut up. Gliger, man. I know. Guys, guys. Each of them carries a mask that used to be its face when it was human. Used to be its face when yes, it it's a mask was human. That used to be its face when it was human. It's not the, it's, they're not carrying a, a flesh like cut off, sliced off, peeled off face. How do we know? Because we I've don't. seen it. Be- the mask used to be its face. If 
I went around town with something in my pocket that used to be my face. I pulled something out and said, this used to be my so, finger. You would expect it to be my finger. So when old women tell you I have to go put my face on, you're assuming that they have a rack of faces that's in the an back of the Durr, that's exactly what I'm saying. This is this is scientific. That is old wives' tale. No, it's a term. Uh, it's a turn of oh, phrase. Oh, shush, you're full of crap. Because He's carrying dead flesh around. It's a mask that used to be its face. Do not make me turn this car around. Turn the car around, I dare you. What will we find? Phil, it's a mask. Jeremy, it used to be his face. Get over it. So he embalmed his face. It is a mask, Phil. It is not a face. Disagree. It is a mask. Face. It used to be a face, Jeremy. <laughs> it is clearly representative of the ancient Egyptians' philosophy of because these people were mummified yes. alive, they made masks of wood, I agree. metal, or gold to represent their earthly face. It used to be what their face looked like before they die. But this is a Pokemon, so it is a literal representation of that metaphor. So there's no argument, guys. We're all right. Yeah, I'm right. What now? It's face. If he's right, then I'm wrong, and I feel sad. Oh, that's up to you. <laughs> it is up to me, Phil. It is up to me, Jeremy. We're just going to go back and forth in this podcast. It's never going to get done. Run time's probably already at like three hours or something. So... Uh, it it literally to me what this states is that this ghost Pokemon, in my mind, what it's done is it has found these long dead Egyptians and picked up this death mask and cries for all the people who will never remember who this person was in life. Okay, where I don't see it as that. I see something similar to what you're expressing, but more of just a a natural just a natural like birth of this taking form you know what i mean like right but we also know that they are a breeding population yes so it's it's tricky um that's what i mean they spawn and they come from these feelings of loss and detachment and so what can be more lost and detached than an ancient dead person whose entire relics are surrounding them, and yet their relevancy is gone, despite all those relics. And one other really common thread among ghost Pokemon is that a lot of them will steal children away, and also, stretching it a little point further, that they're just taking people, or sometimes even helping people or guiding people, but uh, or wandering with them, uh, like Drifloon, or taking them to the spirit world like Duskull, or even like Chandelure has been known to completely burn up a spirit. Uh, I think it's... Is they it, feed no, on souls, Chandelure. No, yeah, yeah. It's it's the pre-evolved version of Chandelure that hangs out around hospitals and waits for people to die. Yeah. Like, what the fuck? And that's interesting. That's very interesting. The yeah, so that some of them, what I see is they're not really burning the soul but they're burning it away to send it to that other place. So some Pokemon act as ferrymen, as guides of transition to move on from having to be hanging around with the living to moving on to wherever the dead go. They consume that energy and allow them to finally be free. So that's another thing is that sometimes these beings of the spirit world, which we call Pokemon, serve in the wild another function, like how bees pollinate flowers yeah you can catch her or well, you can capture a combi but in the wild it serves another purpose other than to be your plaything and battle pet it does things like make honey and pollinate flowers well and again, scare ursaring when you capture a pokemon they're not just your plaything and your battle pet you're forming a partnership right and i get uh, that but i i can't speak to that being true no it's legitimate it's canon you have to no for him no, but it's part of the... You know, he's like, no, not when I do No, it. you can't say no to me. I know what I do with my battle pass. Oh, you're telling me Team Rocket completely views them all as partnerships? So with this partnership, too, we talk about Chandelure burning your soul away in the flame, digesting your soul with its fire. Do you Just think this, is, this ties to something we were discussing with Poison Pokemon? Because a trainer is supposed to have such an intimate connection with their Pokemon... Does the 
does the ponytoss flame not burn you? Does the haunter's lick not j- drain your life force from you? Or there's certain ghost Pokemon that just being around them saps life energy away. Who? So does I, I don't remember, but I know I've read it in a Pokedex. I'm sure, but I, I just like I think you're you're on the right track with that. So yeah, if you so, so when you train them, then like I are cite you the anime constantly. Lo- are you gonna die? 13 years earlier because you're always exposed to ghost Pokemon? Or I actually I actually have a thing about that. Um, I actually believe that the more you train around ghost Pokemon, that there's an interaction, like how the flames don't burn with a ponytail, right? I believe that if you look at trainers of ghosts or ghost gym leaders or the ghost elite four, right? They have this otherworldliness to them, this strength of character and will, I believe that as you hang, you hang around more of your ghost Pokemon, your soul is tested because these things are beings of the spirit. And by having to learn to master them and train them, you can't just see them as creatures of flesh or fire. They're beings of ego, super ego, desire and manifestation. And you have to learn to understand that and even understand it in yourself as a ghost trainer. So you end up g- gaining this immeasurable strength of spirit by being a trainer of ghost types. Wow, that's some deep metaphysical shit. Yeah, I mean, as a trainer, it's not just bringing your Pokemon into battle, whipping them into shape, exercising with them and learning to fight and getting experience. It's also becoming intimately familiar with their type and their needs. And, and You want to be intimately familiar with my low pony? I want to be intimately familiar with your Vanillox. <laughs> oh, yeah. Ice cream party. Damn, Vanillox. Why are you so gangster? I like chocolate ox. Uh, but if you if you are training water type Pokemon, you have to know how water works. If you're training grass type Pokemon, you have to know how to take care of plants and you know all that, what to feed them, how to water them. If you're training ghost type Pokemon, you're gonna want to understand, you know. You must leave. Shit. So do you have to like shit? My Gengar is hungry. I gotta fucking feed it I gotta, my soul. <laughs> like yes, you have to feed it your life force. Like what it's is, a, uh, what's it, the one that is attracted to crying children? Like you're like shit. It's starving. All right, I guess I gotta think about losing my grandma. Yeah. <laughs> like fuck. Yes, and so in that regard, you end up having to learn how to deal with mourning, with dealing with loss, because what they do is that think about ghosts in general. They attach to something, a and, concept, and then they haunt it. And then the more you, and then the more you come to terms with your, the more you experience your mourning in order to feed it, the more you come to terms with it, the less it causes you to cry and feel extreme sadness. So you have to ex- expose yourself to bigger tragedies. Bam! Ghost Pokemon cause serial killers. The fucking extreme religious right was right. Pokemon makes us kill each other. It turns everyone um, gay. It's, hang, a, it's a blight on the world. Well, Fuck hold, Harry hold Potter 2. Pokemon <laughs> podcast over. Hold on. So, J-Man, you're talking awfully matter-of-factly about something that's, well, made up. That's what we do on this podcast, Phil. No, no, but he's like, we we speculate. He's like, this is how it is. <laughs> oh. Period. Like, I've lived through it. This is oh. how it works. Yeah, I've never seen anybody act like that before. <laughs> that's not necessarily true, but it's like, these are the, thing, these are the things that... I actually just hypostulate on, and if I were... Wait, did you just say hypostulate? S- sorry, hypothesize. <laughs> These... Yeah, 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 yeah. You could have said, no, I said I postulate, and I would have been like, okay, I was just making sure. Hypostulate, I like that. <laughs> yeah, hypothesize and postulate. Perfect, that's exactly what you're doing. Yeah, so what I end up doing is I mull over this stuff, and if I were being Geisvix, my ghost trainer, if I weren't making him, in essence, a doppelganger, which is what his background story is, mm-hmm. if he were just a regular person, I see ghost trainers having to deal with that because this is what they have to deal with. So, because ghost types don't have flesh and bone like we do. So, so how do Morty. they gain their strength? How do they gain their speed? I, how do they manifest and grow and build their matter? So you're saying Agatha and Morty just kind of sit on the brink of death and insanity at all times? No, and yes. It they're is extremely experienced trainers. Actually, no, it's not that I believe that they're necessarily on the edge of death and madness all the time. And yet also, yes, they are on the edge of death and madness. It's that while your will and while your spirit is being tested, 
it's kind of like some how some uh, belief structure about shamans work, where you have to fight through and come through the other side of madness to see clearly. Yeah, they are on the edge. They've just got expert balance. And so what ends up happening is that they find or, or they awaken to a, a truth in the side themselves that emotion doesn't dull over time. We just become apathetic towards it. And so they feel everything. And they become this ideal host for spirits. And so they end up providing excellent nourishment because they're awake, they're fully alive. And this creature which seeks to feed off life has now found this creature which lives so truly that they become an ideal partner and host for them. So you say that these these people, let's say Agatha and Morty, just because they're the first two that come to mind, they... Uh, fight through in, insanity, madness, anger, loss, depression, all these hugely tumultuous emotions. And they come out through the other side and they see clear and they feel everything and they're so open. Then why are they so calm and dead? They're not dead, but they are calm. Because by feeling everything equally, you reach a state of equilibrium. It's kind of like trying to say that if someone cared so much, they'd be a manic impressive emotional wreck actually if you really loved everything and everything was loved equally you'd reach a state in which because you love really love everything equally it would appear to an outside observer because their egos tell them well if you love everything equally why don't i feel like you're loving me it's it's more like the idea that i do love you but i also love this table and I love that tree outside. And I love them all so much that Every to you... Every time I try to pull that shit with my girlfriend, though, that shit don't work, man. I'm like, but I love this table. And and so it comes to this point where it feels like calmness or non-directional affection. And That's pe- exactly what I said, too, but they don't listen. And And so people end up thinking that this non-directional affection is the same thing as non-directional love. Affection can be different from love. Affection is an expression of love. Uh... So you reach these these spiritual trainers, these trainers that, that train ghost types, and they have a deep, measurable sense of of like still waters or calmness. It's because, I don't know, man. It's Every... because they're feeling so many different things, and they have because they fought through joy depression, anxiety, envy. They end up getting these balanced approaches to looking at not just the good sides of life, but also the bad sides of life. And yet all the hex maniacs and everyone in the Pokemon Tower, as far as trainers goes, is batshit nuts. Because they haven't fought through it yet. If you look, their base Uh base powerful ghost trainers are the first place. You can easily dispatch them. You can dispatch just, you can dispatch Brock easily. And he's not a base power trainer. He's a gym leader. The power levels are just put there to, to instill no, a sense of progression. But he's a gym leader, and they're not. They're just bullshit. They're just nobodies. They're just pe- they're, they're not nobodies, but they're just Pokemon trainers, base level Pokemon trainers. They are. And at the same time, some of them are even being overridden. Their wills are being controlled by the Pokemon. You see them come at you like, nah, and then yeah. I, I feel calm now because their wills were not strong enough to actually be real ghost Except trainers. for that one trainer that was like, give me blood. Even that could be the manifestation of a no, ghost Pokemon. But that's dark as fuck, bro. No, Phil, that was your creepy pasta. No, dude, that, not a creepy pasta. Look that shit up. Pokemon Tower, one of the hex maniacs says, give me blood. You were in a real life creepy pasta. No, I wasn't. <laughs> no, he's he's right. There, right? Yeah. I'm joking. I was like, that's dark as fuck, bro. I mean, like 10 years later, when I first played it, I was like, okay, he's a bad guy. And that's another thing is that why do ghosts scare? Why do ghosts solicit strong emotions? Because they feed off them. So the way in which they have to feed off your emotions is to elicit those emotions in you. I'm going to say provoke for all our readers who aren't sure what elicit means. Because okay. it can also mean illegal activities. <laughs> that's spelled with an I, not Yeah, me. and <laughs> are we spelling things out on here? No, we're not. I love myself. That's a, that's a different word, though. I know. Randomly. I know, but... I said readers, not listeners. <laughs> I fail. So ghost Pokemon, their best stat is usually special attack or special defense. Worst stat, speed or HP. HP actually makes a lot of sense. Mm-hmm. And speed, this, this thing makes sense too. Like HP does well. Do you know much about the move curse? 
Yes. Curse is, it used to be a question, question, question type move. Now it's ghost. Now it's just a ghost type move, but it's still in then and now. It works differently when a ghost Pokemon uses it than when a non-ghost Pokemon uses it. When a non-ghost Pokemon uses it, it just lowers their speed and raises their special attack and special defense or something like that. Defense, special defense, yeah. But if a ghost type Pokemon uses curse, it has a different effect. The user loses half its HP, but the target, the opposing Pokemon, excuse me, the inner magic player in me is coming out, loses a quarter of its HP every turn. So that it's, that's pretty devastating. Not, not only that, you can combine it with Hypnosis, Dream Eater, and Nightmare to make a really nasty combination. Just hope they don't wake up. So how it ties to what we were saying about speed is that the Japanese name for the move Curse can mean either Curse or Slow. Hmm. So that's why if a Pokemon that's not a ghost type uses it, it slows them down. It's a pun. It's a pun. The highest form of comedy, guys. That's real pun. Ah! Ah! That's real punny. Uh-huh. 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 I feel like Tweedledee and Tweedledum are here. Give me something to work with. There, it's, it's As with a lot of the types, with the changes that have come twice now, uh, it's been back and forth, but currently it is two times effective against ghost or psychic it's only half as effective against dark used to only be half as effective against steel but that was taken out with the introduction of fairy type and it's zero times effective against normal has no effect on normal pokemon and normal can't touch it either neither can fighting which is okay yeah and uh bug and poison pokemon only do half the damage but dark and ghost do two times the damage yeah, I mean, in that regard, ghosts are kind of very niche. They don't really hit a lot for grade. They don't really get hit a lot by grade. They're kind of what I would call a curveball, which is why I usually keep one handy, because not a, not a lot of people plan to see a ghost when you're just, you know, wandering around. Now, my question, though, see, okay, in the first gen, ghost was absolutely ineffective against normal and psychic, which begs the question, why the fuck did Ash have to catch a haunter to defeat Sabrina? Because of the anime reasons. I don't remember in Gen 1 Ghost being ineffective against Psychic. Yep, it was. So what the fuck? There's someone that says that Psychics only fear bugs and ghosts. But it's like, no, ghosts don't even hurt Psychic Pokemon. Treasons, ah. Game Freak. Somebody's yeah, that, the, that is weird. The chart table, yeah. One thing that's cool, too, is that now, this is new, but ghost-type Pokemon are immune to any effects that like prevent escape or prevent them being switched out or anything. Well, yeah, they just phase out of existence. And whoop, yeah. yeah, they go through the ether. Yeah. Which somehow lets you run away from a wild Pokemon battle because your Pokemon can. Because they drag your ass with them. Yeah, I- I'm sorry. If you're Fair fighting... I- I'm-, I'm sorry. If you're fighting a Charizard... And you're like, um, let's let's leave. The Charizard's gonna like, okay, the ghost disappeared. Now you're the target. Charizard doesn't adhere to any rules of don't attack trainers. It's a unless, wild Charizard. Unless your ghost Pokemon is a close enough bond with you that you're now its spirit host. I'm a newbie ghost trainer. And you trainer. just phase away like a badass. I'm a newbie ghost trainer taking a level 5 Ghastly up against a level 73 Charizard and God knows what cave I don't What a very me. specific situation. Oh, Phil. shut up. Point yeah. is. And what happens when you catch that brand new Abra with Teleport and you can still use it even though you just caught it? Abra's super smart. You turn into an Abra, that's what happens. <laughs> <laughs> and then you turn back. I don't know. Point is, um, favorite ghost Pokemon time! Literally read my... That's exactly what I was about to do, too. So, great. Haunter! Just done. Your favorite's Haunter? Oh, yeah, of course. Duh. Haunter is a fucking dope-ass Pokemon. Well, well, hold on, hold on. I have to... St- I cannot stress this enough. The the one that is portrayed in the anime is crap. I, li- so I, like, I liked how they, that. like, joked around and they were, like, pranksters. See, I, and- I feel like Haunter should be more like that ghastly that made Venus toys. That's what Haunter is more... Well, there are more like. than one Haunter. There's some that are jolly-natured. There's some that are serious-natured. Mine is- bringing, up, bringing up, in fact, that point of ghastly who made the Venus Stoys thing. He was actually haunting that town to make sure that people remembered the lady who had given her life waiting for her husband to return from sea. I don't so, know Oh, she shall! Yeah, so in fact, again, that points to another indicator that ghosts carry on a role to remind the people of what has been lost and forgotten. All right, we're just going to call them legacy type from now on. <laughs> Jeremy. Favorite ghost, go. 
My favorite ghost right now. Gengar called it. Gengar. Ah! Yeah. Me and Phil already knew that, but the listeners didn't, so I let you tell them. But I, but I will say this, is that that's not necessarily continuing to be the trend. As more ghost types come out, I reevaluate. So I've been looking at the few other kinds of ghost types. Nothing really still impresses me as much as just Gengar. Gengar's your all-around favorite Pokemon, right? Right. Um, Leafeon and Gengar at this point are equal in my footing. Awesome. But I'm disappointed. <laughs> but as far as Ghost Pokemon right now, straight out, hands down, it is my favorite. But things are blooming on the horizon. I really like Pumpkaboo. I, I really like them too. I hate Gorgeist. Oh, I, I like I like them. I, I I I hate Gorgeist. What? Because what happened to my pumpkin? And what happened to the little little cat thing that was hit, was sitting on the pumpkin? It's, it's I mean, the, the wax, and it's got long hair. Like it, it's it's a combination of like ghosts with like really long hair, like in Japanese. No, no, no. and I understand it. Yeah. I do. Yeah, like the wax and the wick. No, 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 and I and I really do understand it. It's just that now it went from being pumpkin. a pumpkin, Candle. which is very Halloweeny and very very cool, and it's still a pumpkin. No, no, no. no. No, if you look at it, it's more like an elongated gourd. And I get it. It's moving past... Oh, no, no, it's a pumpkin. Yeah, okay, it is kind of like a gourd, too, the way it's elongated. But that's also supposed to be like the wick and the wax coming up out of... That's how I always saw it, out of the jack-o'-lantern. No, because it goes from being pumpkaboo to gourd geist. So it's more like a gourd, one of those elongated... Pokemon have many inspirations. Like That's one thing we've discussed, too, is it's yeah. amazing... How many inspirations they can cram into one creature and still make it seem like a simple, simplistic, iconic creature, you know? And I mean, Phantump and um, and its ev- Fan- and its evolution, Tree something or other, yeah, tree Trevenant, goes. yeah, that's it. Cool. Uh, I would have made those my favorite, but I can't stand the design function you, that they did for Trevenant. It's it's predominantly also a jack o' lantern Pokemon, and those were originally carved out of gourds before they were carved out of pumpkins. No, and I and I get so, that. Like I said, it's just that for me, with my aesthetic preferences, I would prefer it to be something still along the lines of like a pumpkin. So, do you go for the big still, pumpkaboos or the little ones? I don't give a rat's ass about size. I don't there's, actually there's look. four sizes. Yeah, but I don't look for the sizes necessarily for the pump kaboo. Size doesn't matter, Phil. So what, what I just look at is that there's this really cool like glowing eyes, and it looks like a black cat or a bat sitting on top of this thing. And I'm just like, that's such a cool little design for this ghost pumpkin, ghost plant thing. I'm just like, I love that thing. Now, and see, it has this wicked setup that my own ex-girlfriend just used against me. Trick or treat. She used trick or treat, which turns the opposing Pokemon ghost type. And then she hit me with Shadow Ball. So I had all these Pokemon that I was coming up against her with. And she's like, trick or treat, Shadow Ball. Trick or treat. One shot my whole fucking team with that setup because that pump goo boo was so fast. It's amazing. Mm-hmm. Trick or treat is a move that turns the opposing Pokemon ghost type. That's amazing. Now look at this picture I brought up. I know the listener can't see, but you can see where I would see a pumpkin and there's a candle with a wick and flames. But it's also like a ghost with long hair, or it's also like the shape of a gourd. Like, I see all of those things in here in its design, and that's why it's so cool to me. But I love how they've uh, incorporated all those things to do with the jack-o'-lantern into its design. We did an episode on Halloween on Fairpoint, and we talk about the origins of pumpkins and jack-o'-lanterns. And its Pokedex totally totally vibes with that it talks about how they guide lost souls home and that's why we leave out jack-o'-lanterns is so that lost souls who are wandering they can't see on their own will light their paths for them so they can see so i really love that picture i've never seen gore guys depicted like that so i picked the best picture i could yeah no that was that was awesome and that like I said, it's the it's more of an aesthetics thing that always irked me about Gorgeist. All but, right, so would it be safe to go on record and say that Gorgeist is your favorite, Nate? No, actually, my favorite Chandelure. Chandelure. I can see why. Chandelure is a beast. I love it. I love oh the my. typing. Fire and Ghost is just such a cool combination, and it looks so cool with the purple flames and one oh, yeah. of the few that 
distinctly looks cooler than it's shiny. Like, there's a lot of them where it's like, yeah, that one probably looks, the shiny looks kind of dumb. But it's not that the shiny looks dumb. It's that the cool one is the basic form. What? And the shiny's not just some slight variation, and it's not a dumb variation. It's just like, no, the shiny's cool, too. The shiny chandelier, I think it looks like regular flames. Orange flames, yeah, as, yeah. as opposed to the purple flames. But chandelier is so cool. Uh, mine's named Gabriella. I love, I love chandelier. And you, you nickname your Pokemon. Oh, oh, yes. yeah. Yeah. It's a matter of respect and and oh hey can't caring. Say, can't say I don't respect my battle pets okay, <laughs> <laughs> but no honestly I love I love Pumpkaboo, and I that picture started forming little base new ideas about whether or not I like Gorgeist. That's one of the awesome things about Pokemon is that there can be a Pokemon that you hated for twelve years and then one day you're like. Oh my god, I see the beauty in that Pokemon now. Right. Or like even if you didn't hate it, you're just like, oh, that's just a whatever Pokemon. I don't care about Dodrio. And then one day you're like, oh, Dodrio's actually really cool. Yeah. And so, I mean, I've got that going right now, but I swear I wanted a better badass like tree ghost. Trevenant just kind of disappointed me. You didn't want just like Pumpkaboo's evolution to be just a giant pumpkin bomb or something? No, no, no. I'm I'm, I'm moving on to like Trevenant. I mean like past Phantom. I, like, when you see Phantump, it's this little tree stump with, like, this... That floats around. No, yeah. with, like, this ghostly body underneath it, kind of like a... Yeah. Like a fetish spirit or a, or a mask. Oh, okay, doll. we get it, we get it. So what ends up happening is you get this Trevenant, and its Pokedex entry is amazing. I, I love that. Yeah, like, it's cool. Pokemon live inside it, and it protects forests and stuff like that. Yeah, and like... But it, it's, its design is really ugly. Yeah, I don't really like its design, and it doesn't even really remind me of a tree. It's like some sort of lazy-ass yeah. thing. And it can be... Oh, it could be... It's a ghost Pokemon. I'd be okay with it being ugly, but I mean its design is ugly. I don't mean that the Pokemon itself is ugly, but the design yeah. is ugly. Well, what do you mean, like, ugly? Because I, from my my three, four run-ins with the little bugger, I don't... Nothing really sticks out to me as terribly. It just looks like, okay, it's a not, deteriorating tree. It's a tree ghost. Not the little one. The big one. No, the big one. It's a deteriorating tree. It's a tree ghost. I get it. Except that it's not... It doesn't really look like a deteriorating tree. It does to me. Aesthetically, it just looks like Ken Sujimori. No no disrespect to whoever created that Pokemon, but Ken Sujimori would have probably created a cooler Pokemon for a, a tree ghost. Like, I, I don't know. It just doesn't have that... Well, you know why they couldn't go with the with the possessed vines. It's, it's subjective, though. I can't just argue. Nobody's going to laugh at that. Pokemon or Evil Dead... Ash vs. the Evil Dead premieres Halloween. Premiered, premieres. I don't know when you're listening to this episode, but yeah. I don't know. I just, it's just, it, it's, it's subjective, but its design just doesn't, it's not appealing to us in any way. But, but Phantom, the little one, I actually do like. I think, cool I looking. think it's cool looking. It works, but Trevenant just was a disappointment for me. And if they had had a bit more effort, that might have actually become my new favorite ghost type. Maybe. Because because you have to remember, I'm always warring on the side of grass and ghost. So I've always got either a fully grass themed team or a fully ghost themed. Surprised team. you don't like ground. After grass dies, it becomes ground. So you should be like loving golem or something. Hell no. So I'm just I'm looking at that. Refuted. And this and this could have been my favorite, and then it was just like no, nope. Which like pumpkaboo. Pumpkaboo, I like. But it has not become my favorite yet. There you have it, folks. Straight from the horse's mouth. He will eventually like Pumpkaboo more than everything else. So earlier we said that we were going to explore further this idea of us taking everything at face value in the Pokemon universe. And how, you know, that because magic and mythical beings and creatures exist there, it's harder to separate what is real myth, what do we accept as real, and what is just a legend and folklore. Well, in some of the relatively newer games... At least to me, because I'm an old fuck now. Yes, you are. I'm older than all of you. Be quiet. Uh, We get a glimpse at some fiction in the Pokemon universe, and I find it fascinating. Some of the things you do at the movie studios. There is a whole series in the Pokemon world, a a series of movies. They're George Lucas, Eat Your Heart Out, like a serialized film series. (laughs) Marvel Studios, Eat Your Heart Out. They're called Ghost Eraser. You guys, you guys, you guys, you guys ever heard of that? No. 
No, and Ghost Eraser, I don't... Nope, nothing. No, really. Oh, so you didn't do a lot at the movie studios. I, I, I don't even know what the hell you're talking about. Black 2 and White 2. Oh, it wasn't? I haven't... Yeah, it was Black 2 White 2. I haven't played Black 2 and White 2, unfortunately. Well, maybe you should. There's a movie studios, and there's a few gym leaders that uh, do cameo movies there. In. They cameo in, yeah. And you can actually appear in movies. So your player character plays the main character in this series of movies. Uh <laughs> Which goes well because it was, you know, but it's the United States, it's Hollywood, and you get to star in a big production of Hollywood movies. So I'm this character is, could be either male or female. But uh, the Ghost Erasers, it's kind of like a Ghostbusters meets, like, basically they say, like, oh, they, they do it in secret because that's their style. They don't, they, they stop ghosts without anybody knowing anything happened. Uh, but they, they, they're strictly business. So How the fuck did I not know about this? It's so cool. You like, play Black Two. There's four of them. There's four different movies. And when you act in the movies, you have to like you read the script or something like that, and you have to like make certain acting choices and make you get like a good movie out of it. And it, it's like so if you're supposed to hit them with a move that they're weak to, you do that. You know what I mean? Then if you're supposed to do a defensive move, you do that. And then there's certain things you're supposed to say. And you want to say the one that goes with what the script tells you to do and stuff. And then you can... You have to use rental Pokemon, but once you've done it once uh, with the rental Pokemon and made a good movie, then you can go back and do it with your Pokemon. But in the movies, uh, the first one, codename Vigoroth, they say that all the... The ghost erasers use code names because real names are just liabilities. Like, you can watch the movie after you've filmed it and you go sit in the theater and watch it. It's pretty bad. But it's pretty awesome at the same time. I love this. There's so many... Dude, there's a Godzilla series that has a uh, giant, like, mecha Tyranitar. And, like, it's a steel and dragon type or something and, like... You bastards are supposed to be my friends. How come no one told me about this There's shit so until things. now? You have the internet. You get to do battle with like enchanted golems. Like it's it's nuts. There's props that you battle that act as if they're like Pokemon. They have types and stuff. And then they green screen to be awesome when you watch the actual movie. Yeah. So let's, let's, this is. I, I really like this. It really. To, for me to think about, like, okay, now we're actually getting a taste of what kind of entertainment and fiction they consume in a world where Pokemon exist. I would never go to the movies. <laughs> like, <laughs> you kids are going to the movies. Back in my day, we went outside in Pokemon Battle. I just go and download movies on your smartphones. I'm going to go see them in the theaters. Back, back in my day, we acted in that movie, Dash Garnet. The kids are playing Pokemon Go. Yeah. <laughs> like, you realize Pokemon really exists in the real world, right? Dad, po- real world Pokemon are so old school. Stop that now. Back in my day, we had 150 and we were happy. We only carried six around because thems was the brand. No, granddad. That was just your cultural xenophobia. <laughs> what? There was, you knew Johto existed, Grandpa. Well, no, we didn't. You shut your mouth, boy. Uh, All right, come Joe on. Joe say that with my house. <laughs> <laughs> boy, I beat your ass. <laughs> <laughs> you yeah, boy. I, I find it fascinating. So the first Ghost Eraser movie, Codename Vigoroth. That's the character that your player character plays. No. So it could be either a boy or a girl. Codename. And don't worry. If you play a girl, there's a sizable population in the Pokemon universe that will bitch and bicker about how you don't need to have a girl ghost eraser and it's pointless feminist feminist yeah. fucking infiltration of our Hollywood movie. Yeah, 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 yeah. So you will get that treatment there too. Codename Vigoroth goes to investigate this haunted village. And ends up Pokemon battling with this with a uh, haunted man Kadath, and the sprites for these haunted trainers are so cool. Like you see, like the ghost shadows behind them, and it's like flashing lightning. Like it looks like special effects and shit. Like it's so cool, dude. Damn it! You got any money? We'll go get you one right after it's over. I am uh, penniless, and you know it. <laughs> so you, you're ba- doing battle, like it's a Pokemon battle. The the possessed man is sending out haunters and gangers and stuff, and you're battling them and shouting back and forth between you and the ghost possessing him. And then the man comes and says something about, oh, my daughter's in trouble. Like, my daughter's possessed. You have to help her. And so you ask the ghost, like, what's going on? And the ghosts are like... Lol, no. (laughs) They're like, this man's daughter is special. She can talk to us. She can see ghosts. And she's special. 
we like her. She always uh, is nice to us and she takes care of our resting places and keeps them tidy. And recently she's been possessed by something bad. And so they had possessed everybody like trying to get her back. trying to fix it and get her working and get her back and everything. I've got literal goosebumps, so so keep going. Yeah, dude. So that well, that's basically the first movie, and it ends on the. I mean, it's stretched out because you're doing a few Pokemon battles and whatnot, and you're learning these things as they progress. And it's not. I don't want to oversell it. I mean, it's it's in a Pokemon game, so it's it's depicted as well as you would expect them to. I I don't care because I understand that it's in a Pokemon game. Yeah, that's just you get. To be a movie star in which you're like this ghost hunter. Oh, there's more movies, too. There's a superhero movie. There's, a, like I said, a Godzilla-type movie. Uh, the superhero there's... movie's pretty bad. <laughs> yeah, in a, in a place where there's already everything has superpowers, including the rats that eat your cereal in the morning. I don't care about the superhero movie so much, but the fact that you can play in a movie with ghosts and you're just like that. I am a ghostbuster It's it's a franchise. Your player character must be loaded rich. Like you're a fucking movie. Or maybe movie stars aren't as rich in Pokemon as they are. Like Pokemon training stars are definitely celebrated. You're both. (laughs) I just, I'm thrilled. Okay. So let him tell you. So ghost eraser two. Codename Vigoroth goes in search of the haunted child, the girl, uh, Sel- Selaino. I don't know how to pronounce her name. But you go, and she's possessed, and you have to Pokemon battle with her. So she's sending out uh, all her Pokemon. You're doing battle. Gengars and Giratinas and other stuff you can't win against. No, she had a Cacturn. She actually didn't have Pokemon. What? Uh, what kind go- of lame ghost gave her a Cacturn? She didn't have ghost Pokemon. I don't know. What? Dark type. She got hit by something dark. Probably I'm- a Spiritomb. Oh, dark type. Yeah, she probably had just dark type. See, because they hurt ghosts. No, it wasn't a spirit tomb. Uh, you find out in this. So she's possessed and you're doing Pokemon battle. It's a same lie. the ghosts possessing her start telling you about the Majin of Mayhem that lived a long, long time ago and would just live to just destroy everything. It was kind of like Shiva the Destroyer or something. Dark Rye. No. 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 Whatever. We'll get there. The Majin of Mayhem. And uh, Pumpkaboo. One day, though, the Majin of Mayhem got tired because it just destroys everything. So it wore itself out and went to sleep. So it no longer destroys everything. A long time ago, there was also this magician with powers, but his friends imprisoned him because he was kind of a dick. And this was a guy named uh, Old Man Arkham. And when you, you end up like saving the, the girl and driving the spirits from her, but the spirit possessing her was Old Man Arkham, and that spirit escapes. <gasps> dun, dun, dun. What? So that's Ghost Eraser 2. Wasn't as good as Ghost Eraser 1. A lot of people are like, yeah, it was okay. I mean, that Bobby Brown song was really good. <laughs> um, I, no. Then there's Ghost Eraser 3, which this one was in development hell forever. Bill Murray was being a dick about it. And we're like, Bill Murray, you don't even have anything to do with Game Freak or Nintendo. Or, like, come on. And he's like, I starred in that movie. My player character started in those first two. When Bill Murray was playing his copy, he was just like, nope, I'm not going to do Ghost, Ghost Eraser 3. Nope. <laughs> I shouldn't even That's so bad. And he's like, they got Ghost Eraser 3 on there. Which is nice. So I got that going for me. Garfield 4? I'm in. All right. Lame. Ghost Eraser 3. Codename Slacking. So you... Oh, your you character... Evolved. The rental Pokemon your character uses is a Vigoroth and then a Slacking. So your codename must be the Pokemon you use. So codename Slacking... I'm going to be codename Haunter. ...is called by an archaeologist to investigate this haunted golem. Now, I don't mean the Pokemon golem. I mean an actual ancient statue that was built... And, and possessed. it's possessed. Uh, so you do battle with the golem. Well, your character, the character, your character. Excuse me. You're portraying a character in a Pokemon game who's portraying a character in a movie. So you, do, you, do you get confused with a lot? Like, your character actor. When you're walking down the street, Phil, people are like, oh my god, you were in Ghost Racer. And you're like, no, that's just the character that my character played. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, I'm a regular person like you. Right. All right. Um... <laughs> You do Pokemon battle with the Golem. The Golem has its own Pokemon and sends them out. I think it was Regirock or something. Hmm. And when you defeat it, the orb that it holds releases its power to Majin of Mayhem. And you're like, wait, what? And it's like, yep, now that it's no longer protecting that orb, its power has been released to the Majin of Mayhem. And you're like, what? 
bullshit. And the arche- you're like, wait a minute, the archaeologist's voice sounds familiar. And it's like, yeah, it's me, old man Arkham. Ah, I you, motherfucker. <laughs> so you weren't, the, the golem was the good guy. It was protecting the orb that that's, held its power. That's a very adult script. Ah, I tricked you, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and. Nigga, I'm 12. How can I fuck people's mothers? And basically tricked you into waking up Majin. So, Ghost Eraser 4. Uh, really? You don't fight Majin at the end of 3? You fight Majin in Ghost Eraser 4. It's like and some all Dragon Ball Z shit. It's a giant shit. ghost type prop. Like, it is a, it, it's like a total new Pokemon they designed, but it's just a fictional character in this movie. Right, Favorite so ghost. it's not a real Pokemon. Yeah, exactly. It's, Favorite it's ghost prop. Pokemon, Majin of Mayhem. <laughs> yeah, and you fight it, and uh, while you're fighting with it, it asks you questions, and you, if you answer the questions correctly and uh, please it, it eventually like is it's like wow you really know me and understand me and it's like that makes me happy and it dances it loves dancing which is cool too because Shiva yeah loves dancing I didn't think of that until just now but yeah uh, and every time it says it's gonna dance it does swords dance like in the battle but uh, so don't piss it off at, at the end though it's pleased and it's tired and it goes back to sleep and. Old man Arkham's like, oh, God damn it. No. Uh, why would he want to destroy the world? Just wondering. It's a ghost. No, why would old man Arkham want to destroy old the world? Old man Arkham was a ghost. Uh-huh. Oh, why would the ghost want to destroy? Okay, yeah, I don't he know. Was just, he, was like, he was a magician with powers. Why would he want to destroy everything? Because everybody fucked him over and super imprisoned him, and now he wants revenge but like a petty son of a bitch. A but they're all long dead. Yeah, but he doesn't think about the fact that they're long dead. Now they're ghost that, Pokemon. Or that he oh, was... I guess. A, now no. they're your masks. Yeah, he doesn't think about whether or not they're long dead or he's long dead. He's just focusing on the fact that somebody hurts him, and now he wants to rage out and hurt others. So he's a bayonet. Yeah, he used to, after trying to uh, summon and destroy the world with Majin of Mayhem and failing, he now just hangs out at Erica's gym and he's like, you're never going to beat him, chump. No Ah. way you can make it all the way to the end. You think you're going to get the badge? No way. You think you're going to get the Marsh badge? God damn it, it's the Rainbow badge. Sorry, it's my first day. (laughs) Heckling's hard. But I just, I don't know, there's something about... That fictional creature in a world of real ass fucking Pokemon Jin shit. Yeah, that's interesting. Seeing what what would actually entice the imaginations of beings who live with creatures that some of them literally manifest off your imagination. And if I say that Pokemon in this world that me and you inhabit are real because we the idea has been expressed, the universe has expressed the idea of Pokemon. And that makes it a very real aspect of existence that the universe has begotten, hath begotten. Dust haft. That Does that du mean that, Ma, that Mayhem, Majin of Mayhem is real in the Pokemon universe and subsequently real here? And basically I'm just saying be careful out there trick-or-treating guys. Someone might call the cops. Majin might be out there to go say boo. Wah, wah, wah. <laughs> and that's our Halloween special. Boom. I had a lot of fun. I hope you guys did too. I hope the listener did too. And I'm very pleased that I was back again. And I want to have you guys both back on the show again soon. Go check out Fairpoint. Go check out Fair Enough. Like us on Facebook. Give us a rating or a review. Subscribe on YouTube. All of that shit. I say it every episode. I'm not going to bug you with it now. Mainly because I'm tired of talking. I just want to turn this recorder off. But yeah. please, everything helps a lot. We we can never get enough kind words or even constructive criticism. Hit us up on Twitter at FairPointPod. Shoot us an email, FairPointPodcast at Yahoo.com or SilfRadioPodcast at Live.com. Oh, and super fan Josh, super eager to hear your opinions on this one. Oh, wait, it wasn't super fan Josh. You mean the person <laughs> from earlier? No, no, super fan. Yes. Yeah, Josh. He's- oh, because of the Afterlife episode we did. Yeah, go check out Fair Enough and hear that episode. Me and Jeremy did a whole episode about the Afterlife. Phil, let's get you on an episode of Fair Enough soon. Fair Enough. From the Secret Room, I'm Nathan K. And this is Jeremy Davis. And I'm Phil C. Signing off. Talk to you guys next time. New sex time. <laughs>